This is Coogan Cassius for iFilm London. We're at Gloves Community Centre here in Bolton with me. I've got the British super middleweight champion Paul Smith. His lovely belt there. I'm settling, Paul. You alright? Yeah, I'm good. You? All good, all good. So, just ticking over in the gym, waiting for a date? Yeah, just, just getting in with the lads and, as you say, ticking over, just keeping, keeping it a little bit ready. You know, I'm, I'm not in shape to fight, but I haven't lost too much since the fight, so I've just been, been getting in and ticking over and doing bits. And, Joe won't let me have a fair many days off. He's, he's phoning me all the time, promising me this sparring thing and all that. Turn up, and there's no kids here. He just wants me to get in and take over. But you know, I'm, I'm in the gym here. As I said before, the last fight and after the last fight, I've got a you know, it's, a new, it's definitely a new, a new lease of life, and got a lot more hunger back, and got me love back for the sport again. So I, I'm coming in anyway. I'm, I'm running, I'm training back home, and going to total fitness, and just doing a few, few shakeouts and that, and just, just taking over. I know we spoke about this before your fight with Dodson, but looking back on it now, I mean, you, you beat Dodson in a fantastic fight. But looking back on it now, if you had lost to Dodson, would, could you have seen yourself calling it a day? Or this is what everyone was saying before it. You know, it's make or break. Whoever loses will have to retire, and you know, it's last chance saloon and all that. And I, and I, I just sit there and I hated everyone saying it. I just sit there and just nod my head and agree and go along with it. And yeah, yeah. You know, I knew what I had left, and I knew Tony was good, but I knew I was better, and I knew I knew I'd prepared better. That, that's what I mean by by better. You know, I knew I'd i put the graft in myself, and I'd really improved. So you know, I, I knew it wasn't that I wasn't going to lose. I'm being cocky saying that I knew I was going to give up my ad. If you know, if I'd got chins or something like that, then then yeah, probably. But you know, it's just one of them things. I, I don't think about that. I genuinely don't get in a fight or go into a fight negatively motivated. You know, I motivate myself on positives and. and I never let negativity get to me. Um, Rocky Fielding fights Tony Dodson who you beat. First of all, is there some sort of rivalry between you and Rocky Fielding? I always sense there's something mm. in comments sometimes you say or sometimes Rocky says that there's some sort of something that people don't know about, a little rivalry in the background. Am I right in saying that or not really? I, 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 boxed, I boxed with the Rotunda all my life and, and Rocky came and joined us. Rocky's a lovely kid, he's a nice lad, I get on with him. I always got on well with his dad years ago, growing up through the amateurs and there's no rivalry because we've never boxed, we've never been meant to box. So I've sparred him a few times in the amateurs and when I turned pro I went back to the amateur gyms to, to help the amateurs out and I sparred him a few times there. It's just he's a super middleweight and he's from Liverpool and I always seem to clash with him. <laughs> so I, you know, I box Dodson and Quigley and, and you know, I don't get on well with Tony, with Tony Dodson now. And the same with Rocky, you know, I've seen Rocky in the V Festival, I get on with him, he's, he's a nice kid, but you know, a lot of people, Liverpool's like a little bit of a fishbowl, you know, and, and everyone, all the rumours get around and everything else, and I've heard that many rumours about him wanting to box me, and that, that's why I mentioned it after the last fight, you know, if he wants to box me, he can, he can box me next, by, by all means, I'll give him first defence of the title, but, you know, I think Rocky and, and his team and Adam know know what Rocky's about, know know what he is, what what his level is. And as good a kid he is, a nicer kid he is, you know, he needs to be matched right. And he, he knows that and that's not me disrespecting him saying that. He's English champion, he's he's gonna be fighting for the vacant Commonwealth title. Um, you know, and, and they will have to they'll have to pick the opponent right for him. There's there's kids in England that that I know wanna fight him and you know, we were talking about it before about kids calling each other out on Twitter and all that. It's not my 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 style or my scene but Luke Blackledge is calling Rocky out, you know, there's Ophie Burton in this gym who would like to see box someone like Rocky, there's my brother Callum who will no doubt probably box Rocky before I will. Um, but I just want one, one more quick defence of this title against whoever's next in line, if, if Rocky was next then that, that would have been fine, if another kid wants a volunteer defence then we'll, we'll go for that, but as soon as I win this title I'm moving on to bigger things and I'm going to probably vacate for our, our Callum to fight for it. Um. Dodson and Fielding, how do you see that going? I think it's going to be an interesting fight. I've heard a few rumours that it might not be going ahead. Um, Dodson picking up an injury. But I think if Tony's back to his best, what he was when he boxed me last time, and, and he really was back to his best, then he, he, he says it, and everyone that was watching that fight seen he was in fantastic shape. If he can motivate himself right again, because it'll be hard for him to get up for an English title fight after just losing out on a, on a British title, um, then I can see him causing Rocky Field and all the problems going going you know but Rocky's a, a good tidy boxer and I think he could give Tony Dodson a, a few problems with his jab and with his reach and his movements it's just how it, how it goes on down the straight and he'll, he'll want it more towards the end I think. Mm. Um, moving forward for yourself obviously you've become British champion again 
what, how far can you go or how far in your head do you believe you can go? So I've, I've said all along, you know, from day one, that there's, there's, there's not many kids in the world that I wouldn't fight. Well, there's no one in the world that I wouldn't fight, but there's not many kids in the world that I wouldn't give myself a chance with on my day. And I've just got to keep performing and keep keep training and keep momentum. Momentum's the most important thing for me. Um, you know, before my last fight, I didn't fight for, for like eight months, but I was in the gym all the time, there and sparring. I know sparring's not fighting, but it's the best thing that I, the only good, only thing that I could do, and the best thing that I could possibly have. I sparred a lot of good kids, and it showed in the fight. Now, if I'm getting that and regular fights as well, then I'm only going to improve, and, and I am improving. I said to everyone before the last fight, I'm 30 years old, but I've improved a lot under Joe in the last like two years than I did with, with any other coach I was with, you know, and, and I've improved dramatically. Um, the European title's vacant. You know, the, the kid that's meant to be fighting for it, Mohamed. Nadai, I've watched him a few times. I think I've beat him well. And Robert Steger is the world champion. You know, Robert Steger's all second will be here. I'd love a fight with Steger. I've made no secret about it. It's by by no means, you know, unreasonable. It's by no means unmakeable. It can happen. He's due a volunteer defence. I'd, I'd go to Germany. It wouldn't be a problem. And I'd, listen, I'd, I'd give Robert Steger the best fight of his life because I'd be in the best shape mentally and physically of of my life for, to fight for the world title. Okay. Um. Two British champions in the family, yourself and Stephen, who knocked out Gary Buckland the other night. Yeah. Um, potentially another one coming on the 21st of September. Yeah. Oh, Joe's talking about Guinness Book of Records. Yeah. Three brothers yeah. holding the, the British title at the same time. Uh, but it, it's amazing, isn't it, to have, yeah. if, if that was to happen. No, no, I was talking to Ensley Bingham before, and he's a fighter who I really respect a lot, you know, and I've got a lot of respect for the, for the fighters of the previous generation, the previous era, you know, Andy Ogden, Ensley Bingham, all, all, all the likes of them. And I, I was asking Ensley about the old Champs Camp days, and obviously I was trained by Billy Graham, and I've got a lot of fond memories of it. And Billy used to go on about the Champs Camp, and about Ensley and Foster, and Morris Core and everyone else. I was talking about the fact that they had four British champions in the same camp. You know, if we, we could have four or five, but three in, in the same family. You know, that'll be so dumb. Unbelievable. Let's shut this window for you. Okay. So you've been, um, you've been away in LA? Yeah, I went over there with me, my missus, and, and took the kids over and I had, had a good little uh, two-week break, but we're still training, we're still taking over. I went in the wild card. We went in the wild card like six days, five days, and done Santa Monica steps twice for a little one month. So out of, the, out of the time that I was there, the ten days I was in LA, I trained for eight of them, and I was over in um, Vegas for four days with the kids as well, but I didn't do no training there, I didn't there. Uh, I didn't fancy chancing my arm at me with this gym or anyone else. I just wanted to rest while I was there because we just arrived. Important question. The Simpsons yeah. ride versus the Back to the Future ride. Oh, it's got to be the Back to the Future one, hasn't it? I was <laughs> sick. I heard it, well, I knew it had changed because we, we went last time. And I took the kids to Universal and Back to the Future is one of my favourite shows. Gutted, I was. One of my favourite films, anyway. Oh, got, it. got there, I was sick. So I sort of sat it out in protest. I didn't want to go on. We didn't go on the Simpsons ride. I did the second time. The first time I was sitting there trying to be stubborn, trying to, trying to stamp me, me authority, saying I'm not going on and disapproval. We've got a coffee and sat in the air, you crusty burger. <laughs> <laughs> that, honestly, that was a, you've got to be of a certain age to appreciate Back to the Future. Like, yeah. with me, how old are you? 30? 30 now, yeah. Yeah, I'm 32 and that was the right sort of time from the, yeah. the late 80s. I've got, I've got my lad watching it all the time and he loves it. And, you know, it's just one of them. I'm always sort of trying to, get me lad interested in things that I was when I was a kid and said no just just to point out if he likes it great if he doesn't sound but you know, I always point out things I used to watch and programs that I used to watch and then back to the future certainly one of them and keep, keep telling them to watch but he loves it now he watches it by himself now when it's on he shouts me down and that's all. Definitely. All right well listen Paul thank you very much for talking to us um, like I said we uh, wait to see you know, when you're next on and I'm when open, I'm open for October, so I'm just waiting on a call. I'm, I'm going to be ready by it anyway. I'm ticking over and once I get the call, I'll have like seven, eight weeks to get to get stuck right in and get back into shape again properly. All right, we look forward to that. All right, Cougar and Cassius here with Paul Smith uh, for iPhone London. Thank you very much. Cheers. Right, this is just a little catch-up bit. There's been about 
an hour gap in between I spoke to you. We haven't just sat here. I've had a shower. I'm being changed. Yeah. Well, listen. I didn't realise that Rocky and Dodson was off. So I was talking to you about that. You kind of knew. I was trying to be polite. And yeah. Trying to be polite and didn't want to burst the bubble. So I was looking forward to that fight. So I spoke to you for about six minutes about the fight. It's not even happening. So I thought if we don't just catch up on this bit here. Yeah. Because you mentioned that he was fighting for the Commonwealth title. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, but that fight obviously isn't happening, whether it happens in the future or not. I think I think Tony, from what I heard, has gone to the gym. He's had a few little niggles, still, you know, pens and from from his previous fight, his previous camp. You know, the, the, the long camp to take it out here. Um, so he, he's probably realised that he's not going to fight well. He's 100, but you know, I've heard it's a fight that that Dodson still wants. So I'm sure it'll happen future down the line. But for now. Uh, Field will probably fight for the vacant title against against an African or someone, probably win the title and probably have his first defence against Dodson if he isn't made mandatory for the British. Alright, well listen, with that, like I, said, I spoke to you about everything and I just wanted to bring this to it because otherwise people will watch it and then it's, it's off and then I think what the fuck are they talking yeah, about yeah. and blah 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 blah. So uh, Paul Smith, sign us out please. Cheers big ears. <laughs>